Okay. Welcome to today's program, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the Grobner Rooms local history file. My name is Rhonda Hoffman. I work in the Grobner Room at the Central Library in downtown Buffalo. The Grobner Room is our special collections department where we have genealogy, local history, maps, rare books, and music scores. We're open the same hours as the rest of the library. You never need to make an appointment to use the Grosvenor Room unless you want to view a rare book. And if you find something in our online catalog that you're interested in, it would tell you if it was a rare book or not. So the local history file is our most comprehensive resource for Buffalo history. It covers just about any Buffalo topic that you can think of. And there is some coverage for Erie County towns as well. It's a great resource for genealogists, historians, students, historical fiction authors, anyone interested in Buffalo's history. So you wanna look for your topic alphabetically to find the correct drawer. You can see the alphabetic ranges. And each drawer contains hundreds of index cards which serve as an index to local publications. We're gonna look through a lot of examples that I think might be of interest to genealogists especially. The types of resources that are indexed are Buffalo newspapers, especially the Buffalo News and the Buffalo Courier Express, the library scrapbook collection, the local history vertical files, select Buffalo magazines, select Buffalo books, especially those without indexes and with detailed biographical information. Just gonna mute you guys here. The local history file is a partial index. It is not a complete index to any of the sources that I just mentioned. The heaviest time frame when indexing done was done was from 1930 to 1982, but there are citations that go back to the late 1800s and we still continue to index some things today. Today, we usually index maybe some major topics from the Buffalo News, and we also index some periodicals that aren't indexed elf elsewhere. For example, some of you might be familiar with Western New York Heritage Magazine. That's one of the things that we might index. Top, the topics that were indexed varied according to the librarian who indexed things. Um, what was deemed important to index at the time, so maybe what the library thought should be done, but also the historical values of the time. Uh, it also may be dependent on library staffing. So some years there might have been a higher amount of staff in the department where there was more indexing done and sometimes there were staff shortages. For example, in 1977 and 1978, there was no indexing of the Buffalo News because they had staff shortages. The local history file arrangement is in alphabetical order, as I mentioned earlier. What you're looking for may be under a very specific topic alphabetically, or it may fall within a broader topic. So you're all probably wondering, how do I look up an ancestor? And that's usually where you would look specifically. So if you're looking for a name, first try alphabetically. So this is probably a more extreme example of something that we might have on an individual. Um, this person is Dr. Frederick A. Cook. He was, um, he said that he was a polar explorer and it came out that he, there, he might have um, been scamming people. So um, there are lots of articles and lots of cards associated with him. You can see the number of cards up in the right-hand corner. So this is the first card on him. Here is the second card on him. And you can see we have around 10 cards on this person. So first we saw some articles and in newspapers, and now we're seeing some other examples like this is an article in Western New York Heritage. Um, sometimes you'll see just some backed cards. Sometimes you'll see things that are in our vertical files. 
but you'll also see no names within other topics. So if your ancestor was a kind of a more prominent profession, something like physicians, lawyers, judges, that type of thing, look under that heading and you'll see individual names. For example, the top listing here under physicians, ex-Buffalonian Dr. John Calabro will get honor for health work in New Jersey. And then over to the right, we have a section on courts. So you're gonna see uh, listings for different judges. The local history file arrangement of broad topics goes from general entries for that topic to more specific. So say you're interested in churches, you're researching the church that your ancestor went to, there will be a general topic of church and you'll see usually the word general, and then you'll see a number of listings. You can see this is the second card under general, and then it'll get down to denomination. So then there are cards associated with Baptists and this is the general Baptist section. Then under each denomination, it will get more specific. So we'll see alphabetical by church. So if you're researching your church, you can see there's this article. This is in the Buffalo Challenger about this church's 54th anniversary. So you're probably wondering, what do the citations mean? Some are very easy to understand. For example, this one right here, Baptist Union, nearly 50 years old. And you can see it lists the Courier Express. And then it's got the date, it's got the section, the page number, and even the column number. So if, you, if you've heard of this new, newspaper, that'll probably stand out to you right away. But then you might see things and you're like, what the heck is that? Um, usually when you see an R number with a colon, that usually means a scrapbook. But don't worry, because um, we like you to ask us questions. So just ask a librarian. We don't expect you to know what those things mean. So if you see something of interest, you're not sure what it is, just ask a librarian. A good topic to look under for genealogists is ethnic groups. So we have them often listed by whatever the ethnic group is in Buffalo. So Irish in Buffalo or Poles in Buffalo, or like my example here, Germans in Buffalo. So here you can see many different citations. Um, one that I think is particularly interesting is um, here's something on Buffalo neighborhood. So it says one of the most picturesque of the old neighborhoods of Buffalo is the orchard where German people settled. And then there's an article about German emigrants related to the Holland Land Company purchases. So once you're within the cards, how they're usually arranged within the cards as first you're gonna see things in order by date. And those are usually newspapers and scrapbook listings. So you can see this first article here is from 1939. And then you would expect these other cards fall in that same time frame. If you find any newspaper listings, those newspapers are going to be on microfilm. If you see scrapbook listings, we have a scrapbook collection of about 400 different books and their newspaper clippings arranged by subject. So here's an example from the German article that I mentioned. This one tells about immigrants stopping by this lady's house when um, in early Buffalo, like the mid 1800s. So this lady lived all her life at 230 Mulberry Street. And it says their house was a stopping place for people who came from anywhere in Württemberg which had been her father's home. The Gretzlers, which is her maiden name, would move up to the attic and let their guests have the beds below. Sometimes there would be half a dozen of them looking rough and strange in their old country clothes. 
And then after you see all the newspaper citations and scrapbook citations, which would be in date order, then you're gonna see some periodical listings. And um, this one is from, it talks about Buffalo's German colony in a periodical called Buffalo Saturday Night from the 1920s. And over here, it gives a call number. And if you've not visited the Grosvenor Room, eventually you get used to where things are, but this is in our Buffalo collection. And this is a book, um, uh, this is actually a periodical, New York Folklore, and there's an article about uh, the orchard, the neighborhood, the orchard from the 1980s. And this is also in our Buffalo collection. It gives you the call number. If you're familiar with that collection, you can just go to the shelf and get that, or just come ask us for help. And then you might also see listings for items that are have been photocopied and put in vertical files, which I'll talk about in just a second. So this is another um, article, which is that's within a book, and it's called The Bonds of Community, Buffalo's German Element from 1853 to 1871. So if you see something with a vertical file, that's in a vertical file, you'll see this red stamp that's very obvious on the card. And this is our collection of local history vertical files. They're in alphabetical order by topic. They're in locked cabinets and we would hold on to either a photo ID or a library card while you're using the folder. These are the type of things that you might see. So this is some of those items about Germans. So we're seeing these are some different academic articles. For example, the fall of, the German, of a German American community, Buffalo from 1914 to 1919. And then up at the top here, sometimes you will see more unique things like this is someone's master's thesis, um, the German element in Buffalo and vicinity. So someone gave us a copy of her master's thesis. This is from our African-Americans folder. Someone put together um, black musicians in the 1900 census of Buffalo. So there's a list of names that someone decided to give us. Someone did a handwritten history of us for the NAACP in Buffalo. And then someone gave us a transcript of, of an interview with an African-American person that we have in our file. Here's some other things from the African-American folder, um, something on Doug's dive. There's a little brochure from the Colored Social Center. And then here's a newspaper article from our microfilm. Under the clubs, we might have little club books. Some of these, some of the thicker books you'll find in our Buffalo collection, but if these, there are these little more pamphlet style items, you might find them in our vertical files. This is the afternoon study club and it lists the officers. If your ancestor spoke to one of the local, local clubs, we might have them listed in these brochures. You can see that there are various speakers and hostesses listed for this particular meeting. We'll also have see also cards, especially if it's a bigger topic. If librarians put things under different topics, this will give you a clue as to where to look for these other subtopics. So if you're interested in German clubs, it would tell you, um, you know, the Buffalo German Press Association, you should look in the clubs section um, or clubs German section, or maybe this, this must have been a prominent um, German, you would want to look directly under his name. What crime do you suspect me of? Clubs is another great is there something topic to look under. If you're not muted, could you mute yourself? Let me see if I can mute. Okay. So clubs is another good topic to look under. Um, you might, you could look directly under a specific club name, but sometimes there are subsections. Like here, we have a listing. If you want to look for Italian clubs, here's a number of listings that you could look under alphabetically. And, you know, maybe you'll see that your ancestor belonged to one of these clubs and maybe they have records. Maybe you could try to track down records from that club. 
a lot of times under the clubs, they'll list different club elections, like who is the new president for each different year, who's the secretary, other important news about the club. We do have a number associated with um, ethnic groups. Here you can see the Order of Scottish Clans, the Hebrew Social Club. Another interesting topic to look under is Buffalo Inn, and then you put the year there. So there's a card for almost every year from 1791 through 1950. So if you're interested, you know when your, buff your Buffalo ancestor was here and you wanna know what life might've been like, look under this heading. So this is an example from Buffalo in 1806. This is a scrapbook listing and you can see it also, this is also a book. This, this listing is Buffalo Village Families in 1806. So there's a list of the different families that live there. This is a book. And then um, this is a, actually a scrapbook down at the bottom. Mr. David Mather recalls life in 1806. And that leads to this article in our scrapbook collection. So he gets into the different settlers and the different businesses that were there. You might also see images. The scrapbooks are great for images because even though we could get this article on microfilm, when it's in this, when it's on the microfilm, it's not in grayscale. The microfilm is not in grayscale or color. It's in straight black and white. So photographs don't often reproduce well on microfilm, but in the scrapbook, it's still black and white, but it's, um, it's the paper version where it's, you're gonna see the shades of gray. So you're gonna see um, uh, better pictures in the scrapbooks. This one is from the, eight, like a scene up from Buffalo in the 1830s. Another topic of interest, cemeteries. So for you Western New York Genealogical Society people, sometimes we even index something from the Wings Journal. This one is, we had an article on the Howard Cemetery, which was a potter's field. And it's talking about, this is a place that um, people from Buffalo State Hospital were buried if they were unclaimed by their family members. So if you're wondering what happened, where did a certain cemetery go to? Um, where, where did the bodies go to if the cemetery was moved? Where did a certain cemetery used to be? This is a good category to look under. This is Franklin Square Cemetery. And it tells that this site is now covered by County Hall. And it also talks about War of 1812 soldiers being buried there. And then this tells about the bodies were moved to Forest Lawn Cemetery in November of 1851. We have sections in our local history file on for neighborhoods. So another great way to find out what your ancestor's life was like uh, for neighborhoods. You often look under all of these different categories that are this listed here under the different names of the neighborhoods. This bottom card says, see also old Buffalo file. So there are subsections to the local history file, some kind of extra sections outside of <laughs> I guess what you would call the local history file proper. And one of them is called the Buffalo file. And it has a lot of Buffalo facts, mainly from the 1940s and 50s, but they do refer to things and resources that were published earlier than the 1940s and 50s. So here's a section on neighborhoods in this file. And it's talking about these places maybe you'll come across in your reading and you don't know where they are. Rogues Hollow, the Patch, the Flats, the Hill, Shingletown, Tannery Park. And then some of these cards have newspaper clippings on the back of them that give the detail. So this one says Rogues Hollow consisted of the area around South Clare and Louisiana streets and along the Buffalo River opposite Ganson Street. It was worth a man's life to wander into this neighborhood after dark, we're told. The patch was located in the vicinity of Otto Street, Hamburg Canal, and the Lehigh Valley Railroad tracks. 
the flats in the area bounded by Mackinac, Hamburg, O'Connell, and Louisiana streets. And the hill section was where Civic Stadium is now located. That, that file is also very good for Buffalo Firsts. So this one is about the first jail and it says the first jail was built by the Holland Land Company in 1810. It stood on Washington Street on the east side below Clinton on the site of the Darrow Block. The jail was a two story stone building with a high basement and flight of steps up from the sidewalk. The yard was surrounded by a 14 to 16 foot palisade of wood. We also have a section on the local history file on homes. You can look up an address. You can also look up homes by name. So if it was a more famous residence, then you could look up by the family name and there might be the home listed that way. This one is, um, this is on St. Louis Place, Little House on St. Louis Place. And when I looked at the scrapbook listing related to the little house on St. Louis Place, it gave, it's this tiny little house right here. It was built in 1833. And we learned, I learned that it was a home for a principal of the Buffalo Literary and Scientific Academy, that it was a convent for the Sisters of Charity. And it was also used as a morgue during the 1849 cholera epidemic. You wanna look when you're looking up those home listing, even if it doesn't have your ancestor's address, if it's an address right nearby, you never know, there could be pictures of the neighborhood. So you could see an area where your ancestor lived depicted for a nearby location. We have a section on businesses. So you wanna look by the business name. Sometimes things might be under a general category. Say, for example, we have restaurants category, and then there'll be alphabetical listings by restaurants. There's lots and lots and lots of topics. I, there's no way I could cover everything. Um, there's about 300,000 citations on 100,000 cards in the local history file. So lots of other topics you might wanna look under like schools and charities and, accidents and fires and strikes and war, housing projects, apartments, buildings, architecture, cost of living, settlement, streets. I mentioned about the Buffalo file earlier and there are a few other separate sections that are in that big card catalog and one of them is called the business file. Though we have businesses in the local history file. This is on the back of the card catalog. And for a certain time frame, they kept a separate business file. And it's mainly from 1950 to 1982, where you just look alphabetically by a business name, and then it will give you a citation. This cited the Buffalo News and Buffalo Courier Express. We also have something called the famous visitors file. It mainly covers say 1870 to 1970. And it covers, it's, you don't have to be very famous to be in this. It's most representative of theater, um, Buffalo theater. And, but you might also see other types of performances listed in there such as musicians, vaudeville, magicians and speakers. Here are some example cards. So you could look if your ancestor was in the theater or some type of performer, you could look alphabetical by their name. And then you'll see some different performances and what those dates were. Um, it tells the theater name. So this was the Star Theater. And then you can also, if you're curious about a particular play, was this performed here? you can look alphabetically by the um, title of the piece. So this is called Home Again, and it was the Marx Brothers, um, was here in 1915. And usually if something is listed in here, it means that we have the theater program for that item. We have thousands of theater programs in our collection. These are kept on a floor that's not open to the public. So if you see something in that file, ask a librarian and we could check to see if we have the theater program. 
We also have something called the Grosvenor genealogy file. And um, it lists different family histories. It lists different local history books. Of course, those things you can find in our online catalog. But what they did is they also indexed some periodicals. So this is about the little family. It says, um, um, you can see this is a particular periodical and um, it tells you the page number that are in these different um, periodicals or sometimes it might be like a reference set and the librarians could help you find them. And then it listed sometimes records that were transcribed in different works. So this is, it's, you can look by location and then it says extracts from records of the plantation of Smithfield, now Litchfield, Maine. And it tells you it's in this particular periodical that's listed and we could retrieve that for you. The last thing that I'll mention is our picture file. If your ancestor went to school in Buffalo, especially in the 1920s, 30s and 40s, you wanna look in the picture file um, to see if they might be listed because they indexed many of the high school yearbooks that were in the collection at the time. So you can see here, um, Irene here was a senior in 1932 in Fosdick, at Fosdick Maston High School, page 43. There are also other types of images. So if you're looking for an image, um, maybe for your local history book or genealogy book that you're writing, you can look by different topics. So we have a heading under orphanages, German Roman Catholic Orphan Asylum. The library, besides the scrapbooks, the library used to use this old fashioned um, call number system. So the librarians could figure out what these what these stand for. And then we could look in our catalog to see if we still have the item. It's possible occasionally that we might not have one of these things that's cited, but most of the time we still have the items that were cited in this picture file. And that's everything. Let me stop the presentation. Let me stop the recording.